Okay, so uh, I'm going to be showing you guys today how to make a uh, complete Ruby GUI in 10 minutes. If you want more information, go to visualruby.net. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to start by running VR, enter, at the command line to run Visual Ruby. Then the next step will be to go to this open project. And that will bring up a list of projects. And in order to create a brand new one, uh, we will go to, I'm having trouble getting my mouse to work, go to uh, select folder. And we're going to create a brand new project. So this is where I keep all my Visual Ruby projects. And we'll say create folder. And we're going to call it coin flip. This is because we'll make a, a program that flips a coin. So I'm gonna. So now that everything's empty in here, that means it's going to create a brand new project, and we've created this file coin flip. And as you can see, it's already got a few files in it. That's because um, Visual Ruby creates a, a skeleton program for you that's actually a little hello world. So if we click the run button, it's going to come up with this hello world program. So we already have a little GUI to work with, so we're going to have to start uh, editing the files. So the first thing we need to do is uh, right-click on My Class, and we're going to edit the Glade fly file. That's going to edit this uh, My Class Glade file, and it has basically what the Hello World program uses, which is a little uh, label there. So let's delete that out because we're making a new program ourselves. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a H box in there, and that's just for spacing to make it look good. We're going to want to pad things so it looks better. Um, this box here is going to hold all the components, and I'm going to start out with uh, three components on this. And we're going to plop, so now we can plop some controls in there. Um, this button box here makes things look better, so we're going to be putting a button on this screen. So we're going to create a button box and this just gives a nice backdrop for the buttons that's what it looks like there um, and then we'll put a button into that box so now what we've done is we've just created this button one here and it has the name button one okay and we're going to do the same thing here with an entry box and that's going to be called entry one and here we're going to put an image into the top um, and that's going to be called image one. Okay, so we have image one here as the image. We have entry one here is the entry, and we have uh, button one here. So you name button one. So now there's no. Now the first thing you have to do with the button is you we're going to we're going to want to connect signals to it. So when someone clicks the button, something's run. Okay. Uh, we don't need to do that with Visual Ruby. See here in this Signals tab, normally you would fill in a method right here. You would tell it what to do when the button is clicked. But we actually don't have to do that. Um, and I'll show you how that's done later. But I'm going to save this class. And now we're going to add some code to Visual Ruby. So my class here is this Hello World program. Okay, And with Visual Ruby, um, all you have to do to get the button to work is define a um, method with the proper name. And now if you remember, our, our button is named button1. Okay, So it has the name button1. So we're going to call our procedure, our method, button1 and then two underscores and then clicked because we're going to be, uh, we're, this is the signal we want to capture, is clicked. So when the, user, um, when the user clicks on button one, this is what the method that's going to be called. Okay, so when the, when the user clicks button one, the first thing we'll have it do is we'll say at builder, this is a, um, the app builder variable holds all the widgets in it. So we're going to say, um, we're going to 
we're going to access the entry one widget, okay? And we're going to set its text to equal a random number between one and two. Okay, so now let's try running this program. So here's what our program looks like right now. I just, and I ran this by clicking the run button right here. Um, you click the run button and this pops up, okay? So it has a little blank image. It has this uh, entry field, which is entry one, and it has this button. Now, when we just wrote the code here that when we click on button one, uh, text should be filled in to be a random number between one and two. So now I'm clicking on, on the button, and it actually is, comes up as a zero or a one. Okay, so that's fine. This is actually, um, picking either zero or one each time we click the button. Um, one thing that bugs me about this is this is all packed together and I don't like that. So let's um, let's go back to our Glade form and let's add some padding just to make it look better. Okay, um, in this H box we're going to add padding and this B box, let's add some padding. Okay, this is going to make it look a little better. Uh, I like padding. Uh, Let's pad this, and let's pad this, and let's pad this image, okay? Okay, so we'll save that, and, uh, and so that should make it look a little bit better. Now let's add another enhancement here. Let's, instead of making this just show a one or two, we're going to have it say heads or tails. So we're going to say if um, our random number equals one, then builder entry one text equals heads, okay? And or else um, builder one entry text is going to equal tails. So this is choosing um, a number between 0 and 1. If it's 1, it's going to say heads. If it's 2, it's going to say tails. And let's try running it again. Okay, so tails, heads, so that's working fine. Now let's add another enhancement to this, um, which is let's put some images in it. Now I have these two images here of a head and a tail. And what we'll do is we're going to copy them. So we're going to go into our coin flip directory and we're going to put it next to this my class in the same directory as the my class that's going to use it. Okay, so there's heads and tails. They were just copied in here. Now you can see here's my class, but you don't see the files. That's because it doesn't know they're there yet. You got to click the refresh button. Now heads and tails are there. Now, um, one thing we're going to have to do for this is, I'm going to have to go a little bit quickly here, uh, is we need to uh, define a path to these files. So I'm going to say at path equals file.durname uh, file plus. Okay, so that's going to be the path to our file. Okay, um, which is basically just telling it the same path as we're in already. Now, now we want to change image one. So, because we want when the user clicks the button, we want it to show either the head or the tail. Um, when the so what the the thing we're trying to access here is image one. So we're going to say image one file equals the path to the file and the file's name is heads.jpg okay path plus heads.jpg okay and and if not it's going to show tails.jpg Okay, so that's uh, 
that's our file there. Um, it's just um, accessing these files and, uh, and um, in Glade, it's just going to this file image, which is this image up here at the top. So let's run that and see how that goes. Okay, it didn't go well. Um, well, it's, well, it's showing a blank image, but when we click on it, it does work actually. It shows the tails and the, the button. Now as we click, it'll go heads and tails, okay? So it's, it's working. Um, the thing that threw me off was because it doesn't have an initial value. So we're going to set that. And Visual Ruby knows about everything going on here. Um, so we're just going to set the image right to heads.jpg. See, now Visual Ruby is aware that image 1 is um, it, it's going to scan for the name image one and it's going to know that's an image. It's going to fill it in with this as the initial value and we don't have to do anything else. So let's try running it now and you see the heads is now the image. Okay, so everything here appears to be done and I think this program is ready for prime time. So we're going to publish it really quickly. There's actually a video on this, but let me do it for you really quickly here. We're going to go to tools, create gem spec file. And there's one thing we need to change in this, which is add JPEG files into here. And now this should be a working um, program. Uh, I actually don't like this. It says main RB is our file. So let's, let's fix that. We're going to go to main RB and we're going to do a save as. Uh, and we're going to save as uh, coin flip. Okay, save. Now um, now we can delete uh, main RB because we no longer need it. And we'll change in the settings. We're going to change this from, so when we click the run button, instead of running main, it's going to run coin flip. Okay, so now run just runs this coin flip file as opposed to that. Now the advantage we get to that is that when we create our gem spec file, we're going to, now it's going to use this word coin flip in there, okay? Which is what we prefer because it looks more professional. So let's put the JPEG files back in there. Now we're gonna right click on this coin flip and we're gonna say build gem. That builds coinflip 001.gem. I actually have a couple versions up there, so I'm going to call it coinflip 004. I'm going to say build gem. Now the gem is here, and now I'm going to install the gem. Okay, and it's asking for my system password, which I will do right here. And now it's installed the gem. So if we go to the command line, um, what you'll see. What you'll see is uh, that we can run the, the command coin flip and, and our um, program will come up, okay? And it all works. And this is a completely independent GUI now. Um, okay, so let's go back to VR and let's go back to open the coin flip project. Sorry, I'm going so fast, but I have limited time. And so now that we have coin flip 001, I thought we made 004. Let's make 004 because I've made this before. Okay, now we'll build gem. Now 004 is here, and I'm going to push this gem to rubygems.org. Okay, and it says OK. So now that gem is actually published on rubygems.org. Okay, so that's your complete... GUI, it's been created from scratch and published all in this amount of time. Okay, so I'm signing off and good luck to you. Uh, for more, go to uh, visualruby.net.